What up, my H2 Minute family? If this is your first time watching H2 Minutes, my name is Tywan Hubbard. I'm the creator of H2 Minutes, and I'm also the owner of H2Hub LLC or H2Hub.com. Uh, that is my hygiene company. Uh, and I've been meaning to do this video for a little while. I've been getting many inquiries for the last several months, a couple months, I should say, um, about a video clip or a video um, segment with uh, Gary Brecker on the Joe Rogan podcast. This was about three months ago. Uh, and uh, it has to do with hygiene water bottles. And so in this clip, Gary basically talks about why he was really fond of hygiene water bottles promoted them highly and then what shifted or what changed for him. And uh, I'm going to be providing some clarity because many people have taken some of these statements and just rolled off hydrogen water bottles altogether, saying they're not really a valid method of receiving hydrogen rich water. Um, and uh, and so I want to go ahead and provide clarity. Right. And so uh, all credit to Gary Brecker, though, by the way, um, it is hard to do a long form podcast uh, covering many different topics and you don't really necessarily have the space or the time um, to be able to provide ample explanations for your statements or even uh, something that you are mentioning um, in passing of a conversation. And so uh, it's not the easiest format to cover everything with the highest degree of accuracy. And so that is, you know, uh, you know, all credit to him for that. So uh, with that being said, uh, in this video, I want to go ahead and cover that clip. We watched about two, three minutes from this video, and then I'll provide you my opinion of hydrogen water bottles, um, some information based on the characteristics of hydrogen water bottles and kind of how we want to view this uh, from an objective standpoint. And then uh, after that, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. But I think I'll give you guys some clarity on if hydrogen water bottles are good or not good, and if they're going to be able to give you therapeutic levels of hydrogen gas dissolved into water, and you can get a therapeutic dose from them. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to share my screen, and we'll watch about two, three minutes of this clip. Machines to bathe in, uh, and we just set up the, the, the tub at his house, and we ran hydrogen gas into the tub. So we would do red light therapy. Um, he would drink hydrogen water, and, um, and he would bathe in this uh, hydrogen gas, and it was about 15 or 20 days after I kind of parachuted into his camp and and uh, and set all this up that he texted me. And he was like, holy shit, brother, I can't believe him. You know, I'm, I'm out of pain. I'm adding a sixth day to my training routine. Wow. Um, I'm waking up not in pain. You know, I'm sleeping better. Um, and so it's it's really incredible what hydrogen gas can do in the body. And it don't, it don't take my word for it. I mean, there's there, there actually is a really interesting study by, published by Dr. LeBaron, Tyler LeBaron. He's a PhD. Uh, and he actually, I think his PhD is in molecular hydrogen. So I should tease him about where his life went wrong, that he got a PhD in hydrogen. But <laughs> like where, where did you bang a left that you decided, I'm going to get a PhD in hydrogen. But he published a study looking at um, uh, electrolyzed alkaline water. Um, and, and when they removed the hydrogen gas, all of the benefits of, of alkaline water went away. So the benefits from alkaline water are coming from the excess presence of hydrogen gas. And um, even when you add hydrogen gas to regular water, it will drop the ORP. It will make the oxidative reduction potential negative. So it you know has more of a capacity to donate uh, electrons. So I just think it's a, a phenomenal discovery and it's dirt. It's dirt cheap. When you were telling me that these bottles, water bottles that generate hydrogen, they're great in the beginning, but that over time they deteriorate. Does this, would the same issue happen with the hydrogen generators that you would use for the cold plunges? Um, you know, they're a lot more robust. They're a commercial generator, so they're, they're not actually working under pressure. So the water flows through these. So a lot of the ways that you um, create high part per million hydrogen gas in, in these um, water bottles. And, and I, I actually just want, I'm about to, to, to uh, put a press release out about it. I actually just want a $16 million civil judgment against a, a, a fake hydrogen water bottle company that used my name, image, and likeness to run uh, a bunch of ads and sold tens of millions of dollars in these bottles. Um, 
But essentially, at the bottom of these bottles, there's something called a proton exchange membrane. And this proton exchange membrane comes in contact through, with, the, with the water through, through electrolysis, and it creates the hydrogen gas. The problem with these bottles is that this electrolysis process, if you put tap water in there and use chlorine, can actually create chlorine gas. Um, you can also create something called hypochloric acid. Um, so what happens is over time, the bottles that I tested, because I used to be a huge fan of these bottles, um, and I carried them everywhere. And I would notice that, that that it didn't bubble as much, you know, four or five months after I, I you know, had this, had the bottle. And so I sent it to a, uh, be tested, and lo and behold, um, you know, these proton exchange membranes break down over time. So the first time you use the bottle, you're getting very high part per million hydrogen. But four or five months later, you're getting almost none. Maybe six months later, you might be getting zero. Could you just swap out them. the membrane and continue to use the same bottle? Or would you have yeah, to but use they don't, a new bottle? They don't, send, they don't send you a new proton exchange membrane. Now, some of them you can screw off the bottom, and they theoretically could send it to you. But but they're expensive. They're like 250 300 bucks. I mean, uh, uh, an, an H2 tab, like a hydrogen tablet, will cost you. All right, so basically that's the clip. Uh, I got my timing a little off. I guess I could have um, <laughs> take the first 60 seconds, 60 seconds off. Uh, but that's the clip, and um, that little about three minutes obviously has led to a lot of inquiries and emails and things like this, um, and just a bunch of uh, interest in hydrogen water bottles to decrease. Uh, and I want to go ahead and provide some clarity. So there's a couple things to point out, um, and I think – because of the way Gary went about articulating uh, the particular issues of how a bottle can break down quickly, point to, let's say, the PM membrane or things like that. Um, and because it is in this kind of long form podcast, he wasn't able to touch on everything. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a few reasons. Number one, and number two, um, number one will be, yes, hydrogen water bottles, particular type of hydrogen water bottles can break down quickly. Um, and there's no guarantee on any product. You know, there's failure rates on every on every product. It doesn't matter if it's the most exceptional hydrogen water bottle or hydrogen product in the industry. It doesn't matter whether it's a high grade hydrogen inhalation system that has, you know, uh, uh, does you know over ten thousand dollars or something like that. Um, there's always failure rates with technology. So um, you can buy a bottle and it can break on you uh, just be due to. Um, natural, you know, manufacturing hiccups. That's just that's just part of it. And then uh, number two, um, most of these bottles are not uh, what would be classified as a daily driver. They're not meant technically for hydration. They're meant to give you a therapeutic dose of hydrogen in a relatively um, low volume of water. And so most of these bottles are going to be around eight ounces to, you know, pushing, uh, you know, 10, 12 ounces of water. They're going to dissolve hydrogen gas into that, uh, into that volume, and then you're going to drink it. And it's meant to be used probably about three times a day. Um, but I'm sure individuals like Gary or other people who are really health conscious, they are using these bottles as a daily driver, as their means of hydration, meaning they're getting majority of their water, um, from utilizing this bottle, pressing it, um, you know, for a cycle time of 10 minutes and then consuming it. And so if you're using a bottle of, you know, these bottles, you know, anywhere from four to 10 times a day or something along those lines, you're going to definitely increase the wear and tear on the bottle. And these bottles tend to come with a, um, a lithium ion battery. They're not the most, you know, high scale batteries ever. And so they have a lifespan typically from, you know, 500 cycles to, uh, you know, 1500 cycles. Uh, and a lot of things that kick the bucket first is the actual battery itself. It's, it's, it's not actual PM membrane. Um, most of these high grade bottles, uh, high concentration, high end bottles, um, are going to have like a Nafion 117 or a Nafion 115 PM membrane is going to be um, you know, uh, uh, coated in platinum, going to be a higher scale membrane. And those things can last, I mean, a, a good length of time. I'm talking about like 5,000 plus hours uh, of, of, of actual time. And so what ends up happening is um, for production decrease, as you see in the video, he talks about over time, you know, he saw the bubbles, uh, production of hydrogen gas, decrease over time. And this can be due to several different reasons. One, uh, we talk, one would be the battery. Number two would be scaling. 
right? Uh, scaling. Um, if you're not descaling your bottle or um, you can get mineral or calcium scaling over the electrodes and this can slow hydrogen production. Uh, and then um, another thing that can actually take place if it's going to be the membrane, the membrane would actually be the last thing I would actually point to. But if it's going to be the membrane is going to be due to something around maintenance. And so these membranes um, have a hydration status, meaning they absorb water. Uh, and it is necessary for them to absorb water. And so they need water content on top of them. So if you see all these bottles behind me, every single last one of them has water in them because of it, the membrane needs to stay wet and it needs to stay hydrated. And so when you drink your bottle and then you drink your hydrogen water from your, from your bottle or you pour it into a glass and you set it on your countertop and if you keep the lid off or even keep the lid on over time, um, if you don't have any water, consistent water content over that membrane, then it can become dehydrated and, and it can lose some water retention. And um, over time, if you don't do this, the membrane can actually dry out and become brittle and lose its performance integrity. And so now the performance characteristics of the membrane is not as high as it once was. So now this is something that possibly can happen. I'm sure this happens to people. Um, and it's super important um, like for these membranes to have water. So for example, the mechanism that's happening is called the group, it's called the it's called the actual Grutos mechanism. Um, and that mechanism is basically this, the, 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 the simple term for it would be uh, proton hopping. So basically how these membranes end up working is you have the cathode, right? Where hydrogen gas is produced and this is where the water is in the bottle. So if I were to grab a bottle, you'll see where you actually see the actual flask or the bottle itself. You're going to have the cathode right there. You're going to have the PM membrane and then you're going to have an anode membrane. So it's going to be sandwiching that PM membrane. Well, water content, <clears throat> is essential to be on top of it. And then there's going to be some that gets to the bottom on the anode. And for the PM membrane, what's going to end up happening is that protons need to go through or transverse the PM membrane to get to this cathode to make hydrogen. How they do that is through the Grutos mechanism, uh, proton hopping. And so what ends up happening is that protons from the cathode or from protons from the anode jump through water molecules in the PM membrane to get to the cathode. And is essential um, for its performance. <laughs> uh, if you don't have that, then you don't have any hydrogen production. And so now you see why water is so important. And by running cycles on with your bottle, it actually uh, induces a principle called electro, electrostatic drag, meaning when you're operating your bottle and you keep water content on it, you're producing hydrogen gas, it actually pulls water into the membrane. Right. So as this Guthros mechanism is happening, a proton hopping is happening, it pulls water molecules into that membrane. So if a person is using these bottles and they're not and they're not keeping um, adequate water content on top of the actual membrane itself, then you can lose the membrane can lose its integrity over time and uh, its performance can decrease. Now, I would say this is probably likely the last thing I would point to for why the bottle will probably fail. Uh, because, I mean, if you're using it regularly and you keep water moisture on it, then technically it should be working perfectly fine. Um, and uh, a lot of these uh, membranes were designed for fuel cells that, <laughs> that perform um, far more consistently and for a longer period of time, obviously, than what we're gonna be doing with hydrogen water bottles. So with that being said, yes, Hydrogen water bottles that can break down quickly. Um, I would say these would be low scale hydrogen water bottles, substandard hydrogen water bottles. Uh, and um, those can fail super fast within a few weeks to a couple months. High end hydrogen water bottles, they can last anywhere from, uh, you know, uh, one to three years, depending on the wear and tear. And so this $200, $300 investment, I think you have to understand that it's a large upfront cost, which, um, you know, that's part of it. it it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an investment, but it is stretching out over time. So if you were to look at the cost of the bottle, let's say mm -hmm. after 24 months, that $300 is not going to seem so um, gargantuan as a <laughs> as an investment. <clears throat> uh, and so I think this just points out what, what needs to be taking place is one, proper good education, 
um, knowing um, what you need to know about hydrogen water bottles for you invest in it, which you should listen to two minutes. I have videos on this. Gives you all the education. Number two, good sources. Find the place to actually purchase high quality hydrogen water bottles, which also my company, as you clearly see, uh, we've tested many, many hydrogen water bottles and we approve the ones that are actually up to snuff. You can find that on hdweb.com. And then number three, Number three would be, yes, hydrogen water bottles uh, can break down quickly, but it's for various reasons. Um, a lot of times it's just the fact you bought, people bought a poor hydrogen water bottle. If not, then you're going to be having other variables that are playing into it, whether it's going to deal with maintenance or, or things of this nature. Um, battery life, right? Uh, wear and tear. Um, and so I think a good thing to keep in mind is about 500 to 1500 cycles is typically pretty standard for these bottles. Um, and so, you know, this is what you're going to get out of it. And, uh, knowing that a hydrogen water bottle is meant to be a, 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 a means to ingest hydrogen gas. It's not meant to be your daily driver for all your hydration. Like that's just not what they were designed for. This is why they're called portable hydrogen water bottles. They're meant to be portable and used on the go. If you need to get the, to get the H2 in. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I was testing hydrogen water bottles for anyone who even thought of a hydrogen water bottle. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just very, very intimately aware of the technology and what it's capable of and what it's not. Um, like I said, this is my wheelhouse. They choose my wheelhouse. Uh, and so, um, other than that, I think this would give you some clarity. Uh, I would equally agree with Gary on the fact that yes, there are some issues with hydrogen water bottles. I uh, were, were was not fond of hydrogen water bottles um, for a long time uh, because the volume of water was so small and they didn't do a great job of the good issue concentration. And so you're going to do a, do the math on this. You're not going to ingest a lot of hydrogen. So it's like you're going to give you a small dose of H2 that might not give you the benefits and you're going to get a small volume. It's kind of like tiny little thing of water. So you're going to drink a bunch of them, blah, 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 blah. And so but they've actually gotten a lot better. And there really are a couple classes of hydrogen water bottles, poor, piss poor hydrogen water bottles, substandard hydrogen water bottles you never buy. Um, and then you have kind of like uh, kind of the low concentration hydrogen water bottles the mid tier hydrogen water bottles. Uh, and they can still be good, good, um, um, you know, performer and can give you therapeutic concentrations of hydrogen gas in your water in a good dose. And you have high concentration premier premium hydrogen water bottles and those are the ones that people should be invested in. So hope this clears the air for everybody. Um, sorry if the video went a little longer than whatever, but I wanted to explain some of this stuff for you guys. All righty. Catch you guys later.